identify those that are online. I think we've got uh, half a dozen or so online now, so um, it's time. So I'll, I'll kick off today. I'll share my screen and um, just welcome you to the uh, Lunch and Learn. There we go. The Lunch and Learn series that um, we've been running. So it's the Pack Bio Lunch and Learn session. Um, my name is Paul Gooding. I work for Millennium Science as application scientist. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll run you through this session. Uh, it's Millennium Science that distributes um, uh, Pack Bio across Australia and New Zealand. So um, as you can see, we've it's a it's a four um, session uh, uh, lunch and learn uh, seminar series, and we're on to. Um, we're on to uh, number three this week. So uh, for those of you that may have been involved in some of the others or caught up with recordings, we started off with a sort of overview of, um, of how PacBio Hi-Fi sequencing works. Um, and uh, that was a few weeks ago now. Um, and then uh, as the second um, uh, webinar, um, we presented an, an application for microbiome projects. So from those complex populations from soil samples or, you know, uh, swabs from um, human gut or nasal or whatever, and, and to work out what organisms um, were there using Hi-Fi and, and, and assembling the, the sequences from there. So today, I suppose, is um, uh, uh, webinar three is a little bit uh, more of the, um, the application that, that people first probably think of when it comes to, to next gen sequencing and that's just whole genome sequencing so uh, the title today is is hi-fi for plant and animal genome sequences plant went first because um, i have a history in, in plant science in my background so uh, uh, and they, they tend to be ignored there's so much data on human particularly out there and other animals but um, but it's plants as well so um, and, and the session will run i think uh, today is a lot of of kind of examples of of how you might use um, the sequencing technology and what you can do with not just assembling genomes, um, which is uh, obviously useful, but um, but then what you can do with that data. So to look at, um, at variation within sequences, structural variants and things like that. So we'll talk about that as we go through. Um, so there we are, high five for, for plant and animal genome sequences today. Just to start with, um, a little uh, reminder of, of, uh, of of how pack bio works as i said in the first session we talked um in, in a lot of detail about how um, sequencing works but just a few things to to bear in mind um, really definitions and things um so essentially if you can see my mouse here you can start off um with with making a library effectively of your of your dna so this piece here it might be say for example this could be a piece of cdna so you could take your rna and make cdna and look at the transcriptome which we're going to talk about in a couple of weeks time in detail but it could be that or it could could be your complex um, uh, population like we talked about last time where you smash up the DNA and, and, and make libraries or, or for today it could be your, your animal or plant genome that um, you take out high molecular weight DNA, you, you break it up to make libraries, um, you tidy the ends and repair any DNA damage and you ligate on these little adapters called smart bells and um, that allows you to anneal a sequencing primer and then to bind a polymerase and this whole complex goes on to the, the, the so-called smart cell, the sequencing cell, which has got 8 million little nano holes called ZMW, zero mode waveguides. And, and uh, um, due to the biotin and streptavidin binding of the, of the polymerase and, and the bottom of the smart cell, these molecules in your library are pulled to the bottom of the wells. And then as fluorescent bases are incorporated, um, only the, um, the fluorescence at the very bottom of the well is seen. Um, and so you're, the, the, the movie that is running that, that, that looks at the cell is able to um, see those um, fluorescent flashes effectively in real time and, and make a movie of your sequence. And that's happening across the entire cell. So millions and millions at a time. And uh, essentially the machine runs its sequencing, the polymerase just churns around, but there's kind of two ways of, 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 uh, of looking at the data. So this is more from the software side, if you'd like, even though the sequencing continues, if you have a very long read um, piece of DNA from your library, so even up to a, say 175 KB, so a long piece, the polymerase is gonna to start to read and chug, chug, chug and chug along until, um, 
well, a number of things can happen. Um, e either um, there is some damage on the DNA and, and the sequencing stops, or um, the, um, the reagents are just um, getting used up, or the polymerase starting to get poisoned or whatever, um, or you just run out of movie time. So it just keeps running and running and running until at some point it finishes. And it may have read all the way through here and ran the bell and just back a little bit the other way because the sequence is so long. Um, and that's called the um, continuous long read sequencing or CLR mode, if you like. Uh, but the sequencing runs exactly the same as, um, as it did down here. And we saw the little um, um, cartoon or little uh, um, animation here um, running. If you, if you run with slightly shorter, and it's still a long read, but you, you, you run with slightly shorter library molecules. Um, so you say you have a, a fragment here that's 25 KB. What's happening is your polymerase reads along goes around the smart bell and it reads the opposite sequence and back around the smart bell and reads the first sequence and back around the smart bell and reads the, the complementary sequence again. So what you're effectively um, doing there is uh, you're, you're able to read multiple passes around the same molecule. So if there's any errors with the polymerase and polymerases just do naturally cause errors um, about one in a thousand bases or something. So as they read through, um, those errors, when you when you when you form this 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 contig if you, or this this um, um, consensus, you're able to um, screen out any of those errors. Therefore, this so-called high fi or high fidelity high fi reads, um, it's still the same long read, but because the software is now expecting to see your library and then a piece of known smart bell sequence and then unknown your library and then a smart bell sequence, it can screen for those. It can clip off those smart bell sequences and then um, make this consensus out of these, these, um, these reads. And it means you end up with a very long read, but a very, very highly accurate read as well. So that's, that's the, the magic of HiFi and why we're talking about why we'd use HiFi reads for plant and animal genome sequencing. So that's just a, a brief intro and catch up if you've, you've missed the last couple of sessions. So whole genome sequencing on uh, SQL 2. Okay, just a little bit of, uh, of, of a high level overlook of, uh, of what you can do. So obviously with sequencing, you can do your de novo, um, you know, your whole genome sequence and de novo assembly. But um, uh, if you want to run on a, a single smart cell, um, you can get a, a lot of uh, fantastically useful data for, you know, two to three gig genome, human sort of size genome. Um, you, you can get really good data. If you want to get to this, these, these, these specific, say, ethnicity specificity within the human genome, then so um, uh, you you really need to run uh, a genome over over multiple smart cells. Okay. Okay, um, but it gives you extremely high accurate, high um, contig, high correctness, high completeness for those reference genomes. They really, really are the gold standard um, for this now. Um, and there's an idea about how many samples you could run on a SQL 2 per year. And, and, and of course, you're, you're using high fi reads. So you're making those libraries around about, let's say, 20, 25 KB um, um, inserts and, and running multiple times around the molecule to get these really, really high accurate sequences. Now, this is one of those slides from PacBio that has, has changed and over, over the years of, of, um, of what they recommend um, um, for how you do your sequencing. And, and HiFi is becoming more and more the, the way to go forward to, for, for all the PacBio sequencing needs. Um, and, and this bottom one here is, has changed very, very recently. And I will talk more at the end of the talk about um, some of the latest um, advances coming from PacBio that are happening right now, like this week. But, um, but out of your assemblies and, and your genome sequence, you can look at the data in detail and you can look for variants. Obviously, there's many, many, many SNPs and, and things in, in genomes. Um, and so um, you can look for those with very, very high precision and very, very high recall if you have a reference. Um, to look for those um, SNPs or single nuclide variants. Um, you can look for indels, so insertion, deletion type, um, so that's, that's slightly bigger than a single nucleotide, or these larger structural and, or copy number variants. Um, and you can look for those with very, very high accuracy within high fi reads. Um, and again, um, you can do it over a smart cell, but recommended maybe one human genome at this kind of resolution for two smart cells. Um, and again, it would, it would give you high fi data. 
And then finally, there's um, the so-called structural variant detection. So these are much larger changes in the genome. And um, um, uh, again, um, high furries, it used to be that they recommended just um, continuous long read type sequencing for this, but, um, but now um, it, it, it's recommended to, to, to use HiFi um, type data, so reading multiple times around the around a circle because the read lengths are getting better and the polymerases are running faster and things which we'll talk about later. Um, but again, it's one or two um, human genomes for smart cell to look at this very, very high precision and recall for these structural or copy number variants, which again are, are multiple, you know, tens or hundreds of base changes um, that you're not able to do with other sequencing technologies, shorter reads and, and such like. So how do you make your libraries and things? Where do you start? Well, um, there's uh, obviously protocols for this from, from PacBio. So they're so-called procedure and checklist um, type documents. Um, and, and this one, um, preparing HiFi smart cell libraries using the Express Template Prep Kit 2. We talked about um, how you make libraries in, in the first session. And uh, I won't go into detail um, too much with that today. Um, but obviously, the guide takes you through um, how to get really good quality genomic DNA, how to QC and quantify that. So that's the most important starting point for this um, is, is high quality molecular weight, high molecular weight um, genomic DNA from your species of choice. Talks about how to shear that down into the desired size for your library, say 20 KB or whatever you're looking for um, um, using a Megaraptor or, or, or Kovaris G-tubes or whatever. Um, and uh, it then talks you through the process of, of, of um, taking those, those sheared fragments and repairing the ends, repairing any DNA damage along the molecule, um, and then ligating the adapters, these smart bell adapters to the end and, and making this uh, a pack biotype library. Um, then talks about um, doing size selection so that you keep a very um, tight uh, rein on, on the size selection of the, of the molecules. So you, they're all of a very similar size around say 20 KB or whatever you're after. Um, and there's a number of ways of, of, of doing that too. Um, and then of course takes you through the guide of, of how um, you take your library and uh, quantify it and then are able to um, anneal the sequencing primer and then bind the polymerase at the right um, uh, ratios um, and then uh, put that onto a sequencing plate on the on the pack bio um, sql2 deck and and do the sequencing so it takes you through those steps but um just to note um and i will say talk about this at the very end there's a uh, this was a a, a, a a document that's just been updated because there are, are new versions of um, coming um, for the chemistry and, and the way that the um, the hi-fi sequencing works so um, there's a, a brand new version coming like right now so again what you need to do your um, de novo sort of um, whole genome sequencing um, de novo assembly type uh, work well, um, you need your starting material and you need about 15 micrograms of DNA, high molecular weight, so 40 KB or, or, or larger is, is great. It allows you to, to shear to your, your required sizes um, um, with good integrity. Um, and you need your, your Express Template Prep Kit too, which is a pack bio kit that we can um, help you order um, through Millennium Science. And then you're gonna, as I said, you're going to um, shear that down to say, 15, 20 KB, whatever size um, you want um, and, uh, and size select and, and make your library. And then you're going to generate the, um, the hi-fi reads on your, on your SQL 2 instrument, um, whether that's yours or whether that's from a service provider, of which there's, there's a couple in Australia that you can use um, and move forward from that. And it's recommended that, um, um, again, depending what sort of data you're after, but here for de novo assembly, um, sequence say 10 to 15 fold um, hi-fi read coverage um, per um, phase to um, haploid, haploid genome effectively. So, and then um, you've got all your data, data analysis. There's um, a lot of tools built in for the, um, for um, uh, analyzing uh, pack bio data that are, uh, from pack bio themselves. Um, um, obviously, there's many third party tools that you can use as well to um, to make these genome assemblies, but it can all be done through SmartLink, which is, is the pipeline provided for, to you by pack bio for, for SQL type data. So there's a number of questions often get asked, I guess, at, at, at this point. Um, um, and I've said, 
um, absolutely uh, hi-fi um, is um, the recommended type of read rather than just these super long um, continuous long read sequences just because of the accuracy now and and you're still getting a, a really long read length anyway but just so super high accuracy um, and we'll give some examples as we go through this the the accuracy just allows the um, the assemblers to work so much better um, uh, and uh, it also um, because you're you're getting a massive amount of sequencing data but you've got this consensus read, it actually cuts down the final um, consensus size of the data down hugely. So it's much easier to transfer that data around and, and handle it and manipulate it. So the compute times and resources um, go down. So it makes makes life a lot better for you. Um, some people say, well, okay, particularly where I came from and from plant uh, work. Well, okay, I, I, plants are really complicated. They often have really massive genomes. They're not necessarily diploid. They're often, you know, polyploid, so hexaploid or whatever. And how, how, how do I go about sequencing that? Surely long read, just super long reads would, would be better to, um, to, to tell between the different um, um, geno genomes within a, a polyploid. But again, no, it's found certainly that HiFi is better for this. Um, uh, it, it, uh, it, it massively cuts down again the, the the compute time and resources for doing the analysis um, and you're much better with the really really high accuracy to tease apart those sub genomes out of a, a of a polyploid organism so again definitely go um, for the hi-fi um, option so those libraries are around 20 kb and away you go again we'll have some examples coming up there's lots and lots of tools to do the assemblies for hi-fi data, um, either through um, um, the, the, the SmartLink uh, or, or other third-party tools like Falcon and things like that, which I think is also used as part of the uh, of the pipe, pipeline within PacBio. Um, and, uh, so yeah, the, the, those and other questions. There might even be a question come up in the Q and A box here. Um, for library prep, is the minimum required? Uh, is, yes, that's the recommended um, is 15 micrograms for this, but um, there are also um, uh, um, uh, lower input and we'll talk about those as we go through, but uh, thanks for your question. Um, I will try to answer questions as I see them or, or at the end um, to see how we're going. All right. Now I've pressed the Q&A, it won't let me change my slides. There we go. Okay, so some examples here um, from um, three different genomes, a uh, 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 super important plant species uh, for, for the diets of many, many, many millions of people on, on the planet. A slightly irritating um, uh, insect that's used as a, as a, a genetic model system. Uh, it's just off there and then a, a, a rather destructive um, hominid that, uh, that lives on this planet. Uh, so yes, um, three genomes. Um, so just uh, having a look at, at what you can do with the data across these three. Um, if you've got uh, uh, going for inserts, uh, you know, at around that 15 to 20 KB as, as, as is recommended. So there's slight differences here, but they're all around that same size. So size selected for around these sizes. Gone for that 20, about 20 fold coverage um, across all of these. Um, and then just looking at the, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the contigs um, size. So at the M50 size, it means um, that greater than 50% of the genome is covered by a contig of, of this size. So of, um, in rice, example here, more than half of its genome is, is, is covered by a contig that's at least 10.7 meg or bigger, right? So that, and, and, and likewise, for the Drosophila are a little bit shorter, for the human, um, much larger. So um, really, really large um, sections of, of contig, um, uh, you know, getting up towards chromosome size, which is um, fantastic. Um, so very high um, 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 contiguity um, assemblies with the hi-fi data, extremely high accuracy. So the assemblies are awesome. Okay, uh, a little bit more from uh, from that same sort of data set. So the um, genome assembly size um, in gig, again, you, you basically got um, complete genomes here um, and um, the accuracy um, so-called FRED scores, Q scores here are up at almost Q50, which is insanely accurate. You're talking at Q50 is 99.999% accurate. And the Busco score, which is a, a measure of the completeness of, of, the, of the genome sequence, again, um, here, 
um, pretty high, um, you know, 98, 99% uh, for most, a little bit lower, 95% here in human, but uh, these things have, have improved. This slide is probably a little bit um, older now, a year old or something. Um, and again, they're improving. Um, um, but another good measure here is um, genes in frame. So the completeness of the, of, of the actual transcriptome um, information out of that genome, again, very, very high. And from, from the human reference, it's uh, very, very high indeed, 99.5% um, um, specific genes genes in frame. So, and, and the accuracy there, again, just highlighted everything over Q40. So that's great. So um, an example here, um, as I said, I tried to um, slide in some plant examples because a lot of a lot of people that see um, talks um, uh, from from um, from sequencing, oh, excuse me, um, are seeing a, lo a lot of stuff from from particularly humans. So I thought I'd try and uh, uh, um, even the balance a little bit. Um, Example here from from maize um, uh, from from um, from last year. Um, again, just an example of um, uh, why you'd use high fi reads against just these super long continuous long reads from from a from a pack bio sequencer and and um, uh, and this was presented at PAG last year. Um, a comparison of the, of, of the the file sizes here particularly, and then the the the, um, the analysis um, time. Um, and as we said, those super long reads, you, you um, are, are taking those reads, basically tiling them and, and, um, and then having to, to make an assembly from those, um, uh, looking at the overlaps and, and trying to uh, screen out any errors and things that way. Whereas with the hi-fi reads that are going around and around those same molecules, you essentially do that in real time. While it's sequencing, you're able to compress that down to, um, um, to, to a, a, a perfect sequence, if you like, or a near perfect sequence. And that's being done. So that saves you so much um, um, analysis time and no pre-assembly that's required. Um, so the, the take home here was, um, of course, you compress those subreads um, from the hi-fi data. So your, your, your overall file size is, is much smaller. Um, again, less compute resources required for storage and transport and, and moving that around to collaborators or whatever. But the real win here was um, because you've got such accurate um, reads from the hi-fi um, and so much of that works has actually been done for you uh, that the the um, the assemblers work so much better so in half the time um, you're able to assemble a maize, maize reference genome um, compared to um, the long reads so I think that's really important to bear in mind uh, another example here, back to back to that hominid again, back to human data here. There's there was two um, papers pub published together here um, um, quite recently, um, the end of, of 2020, and um, again just lo looking at, um, at basically the complete phasing of, of the human genome, um, uh, and let's say. Two, two different papers using slightly different methods, but the same kind of technology um, um, and coming up with very, very similar results here. Um, and, you, and you can see um, you've got basically complete chromosomal coverage from the human genome um, and, the, and the, um, the, the data quality and, and length, it gives you the ability to, um, to have the assemblies with, with very, very high detection of all the single nucleotide SNPs, uh, indels and, and structural variants um, across the entire human genome. So um, yeah, very powerful. Um, and then of course, there's areas uh, of the genome that are, are notoriously or have been notoriously difficult to, um, to elucidate from, from, from particularly short read sequencing or even the, the longer read sequencing where the accuracy is not so high. So these highly repeated regions um, and, and, uh, and those sorts of areas, very, very difficult to, to resolve um, in, in sequencing terms. And there's an example here of the centromeres, okay? So where those chromosomes knit together in the middle of those centromeres. Um, Again, complex um, organization of the sequence at that point. And um, uh, as you can see from the, the, the table on, on the right, um, you had this, this region of the centromere and um, uh, it was very, very, very difficult to resolve um, using Oxford nanopore, which is another long read sequencing technology. So using the Oxford nanopore um, technology, you've got this big dropout between 22 and, and, and 23 mega across these beta satellite regions um, in the centromere. 
where as you see incredibly even coverage from that 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 top um, graph there from the hi-fi data so um, you didn't have that drop out and you're able to resolve um, that um, centromeric region, um, in fact, in in in, uh, in in nine different samples, um, and the assembler that was used is, is was is is a a high fine modified version of canoe um, called high canoe, which is again in in the pack by pipeline now. So um, you're, you're able to do these sorts of um, of assemblies, and uh, with very high accuracy, even across very difficult sequences. I suppose the other difficult sequences, rather in the centre of the chromosome, there at the centromere, is on the ends. Again, this this cap structure, which is very complicated, but again for the repeats, and, and it's very very difficult um, to map because of the motifs and the and the way they lay out. It's almost impossible to get a handle on with um, with short read sequencing technology. Um, but it's it's doable for sure using hi-fi reads and um, there was data from this paper that um, that just showed you the the um, the, the, the way that um, the the, um, the the reads clustered and how they were able to resolve um, all that um, that very difficult to resolve type of sequencing just because you've got the read length and the read accuracy to go through the repeats and and um, and, and spot any real changes and and, and be able to align it all. And finally, one of one of my, I suppose, um, quite favourite examples. Um, uh, again, it's uh, uh, a, a plant. Um, so, uh, some time ago, um, Oxford Nanopore, again the other long long read sequencing technology, um, decided to sequence the sequoia, the, um, the, the giant redwood. Um, and uh, they did this um, using, uh, well, it's a combination of uh, the long read um, Oxford nanopore sequence and a lot of, of short read data as well. Um, and, and this was put together. Um, but because PacBio, there they are in California, we're around these California redwoods, they thought, well, they should do this as well. So, um, and they did it with incredible speed too. So one of the people in the lab at, at PacBio went out on a hike and um, collected, um, I believe, um, needles from the, um, um, from the from this effectively pine tree, this California redwood. Brought it back to the lab. They did um, um, high molecular weight DNA extractions from, from, the, from the, the tissue. And uh, and then they sheared it and, and made their libraries and uh, and they did that in in a very short space of time in under a week, um, and then um, they um, sequenced it across multiple smart cells, um, and the uh, details are in in the table there, um, and uh, we'll, we'll work through that. But really, within um, a very short space of time from collection to um, complete genome, just note that this again is a plant genome highly complicated, 27 gig hexaploid genome. So um, not at all for the faint hearted if you're sequencing. As you see, they both high fire read and the, the long read Oxford Nanopore, they went for about 20 ish uh, fold coverage, 22, 23 fold coverage, but <laughs> the short read data, they had over 120 fold coverage um, 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 tiled into that, that ONT data as well. Um, but when you look at the um, assembly size, um, and it's good from that amount of data on the left in blue from ONT in short read, it's, it's good, but it's really superb from the, from the hi-fi data. So um, they, they've got haplotype resolution of, of a nearly 50 um, gig um, uh, assembly size. Again, the contiguing 50, so more, more than half of the genome is tiled by contigs that are almost two meg or be bigger. Um, much, much better than the, the alternative long and short read combined. Um, another a telling stat, um, because there was no reference genome for, for, for this giant redwood, they took the, the, the plant model species, the, the Drosophila of plants, if you like, the Arabidopsis, and, um, and looked for um, uh, alignments with the um, known genes in, in Arabidopsis. And, and again, did pretty well from the, um, the long and short read data combined, about 80%. And, um, but again, much better, closer to 90% for um, complete genes from the, from the HiFi data. But, the stat that's really telling, I think, is, is that um, the assembly time from this combined long and short read data is nearly almost six months. Um, whereas in fact, the hi-fi data, because you've got that perfect consensus read um, with all, all the accuracy and the length, um, the assemblers were able to, to, to put that together in six days. 
um, and I think it was about another week um, that was the lab time for um, DNA extraction, making the libraries and, and, and running the sequences. So, so in, 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 in a, only a matter of a couple of weeks, they went from um, going out for a walk effectively to collect samples to, to actually having a, a completed de novo assembly of, of, of the sequoia, the, the giant redwood, which I think is a, a fantastic example of the power of, of hi-fi sequencing. So just moving on to what you do with some of this data now, there was a, a paper published um, uh, some time ago now, uh, a year or two ago now, um, about um, uh, variants um, within genomes. Obviously, this is this one's human, um, but it's, it's estimated that um, uh, there are many, many, many differences between each individual um, in, in terms of SNPs and, and, and smaller or larger um, uh, variants uh, within the genome probably 5 million um, different um, base changes from, from um, individual nucleotides and, and, and changes between um, different individuals um, that, that vary from the human reference genome, if you like. So um, um, a, a while there's so many of these single nucleotide variants, there's actually the, the, the difference in, in actual bases, most of it is, is, is wrapped up in these large um, sort of structural variant changes. So um, the, the, the little chart on the left shows you the, the, the kind of distribution of, of, of things. So, um, you know, small nucleotide variants, you know, five meg indels, so less than 50 base pair size, three meg. But these large structural variants, anything 50 base pairs or larger. So this could be, you know, this could be tandem repeats and, 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 th and things that are large segments or, or chromosomal duplications, those sorts of things. Large changes represent about 10 meg change. And while you can get your small nucleotide variants or even some indels um, with short read sequencing technology, you just can't you don't have the power to get these larger changes or, or changes that that, that, that uh, are, you know, are in large sections of repeated DNA um, using short reads. Um, you need long read and you need accurate long read to, to detect real SNPs and not just errors in your sequencing. So this is where, again, PacBio Hi-Fi reads have a, a real advantage. So, um, and of course, um, uh, using that power towards um, yeah, human disease, genetic diseases. Um, uh, there's been a, a huge amount of work going on across the world on various um, genetic diseases and, and things that were just weren't understood and, and, and couldn't get a handle on properly with the technology that was available um, before. Um, they're now beginning to find um, some of these, these structural variants that are, that are causing the, some of these, um, you know, medically relevant um, diseases. Uh, and the list is, is changing, ever, ever changing. So um, um, using um, uh, PacBio Hi-Fi reads, um, all of these different genes, they're, they're beginning to, to discover structural changes or repeats or inversions or whatever um, within these, um, these genes that are causing the, um, the genetic disease and, and, and more and more is being characterized all the time. So um, just as an example here, um, I'm not a human geneticist, but there's a gene STRC, which again is a, is a, um, a medically relevant um, gene um, that, that, that causes problems when there's something wrong and um, um, they, they just couldn't get a handle on the, um, the, the, the why there was um, these cases of, of disease um, using short read. There was just dropouts and, and in repeat regions where they just couldn't get a handle on anything. Whereas um, again, using um, high fire reads, um, you get a much more even coverage and longer context and they were able to um, identify regions of change, um, um, these, these variations and, um, and map that to um, what was causing human disease. Um, and again, this is it's, uh, the same data, just um, uh, aligned slightly differently. And, and uh, so you've got Illumina data where you just can't get through the, um, the length that you need when these unmapped regions, so-called. You've got the, um, the long read Oxford nanopore data at the, at the bottom, which again, it's got the read length, absolutely. But um, unfortunately, the, the, it's very difficult to tease out the, um, the errors in the, in the ONT data compared to the real um, um, 
sequence changes. Whereas with the high fire reads, you've got the length and the accuracy to do exactly that. So you get fully mapped and phase regions and, and you can clearly see variants and you're able to see the haplotypes and you're able to um, see which ones um, um, cause disease and which ones don't. Um, and again, the little table on the right, just showing um, um, uh, the precision and recall of, of these um, uh, variants. Um, and again, for, for, for SNPs, for small nucleotide variants, uh, obviously the short read does very, very, very well. In fact, all of the sequencing te technologies do, do really quite well. Um, but it's when you get through to the um, either indels or, or, or structural variants that, um, that, that you have the power with um, the pack bio reads to, um, to, 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 to get down to, to finding those with the high precision recall that you need. So a little bit about um, coverage recommendations for um, for different types of, 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 of variants. Um, again, there was 15 fold, I think I mentioned for, for structural variation and uh, the, the graphs really show um, why for precision and recall um, in the, the, the blue and green lines there. Um, uh, and, and 15 fold coverage just routinely seems to, um, to be that sweet spot where you can um, uh, discover the, 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 the best um, uh, bang for your buck, if you like, for, for finding all of those variants. And again, um, just a performance comparison of a, of a human genome uh, reference um, with, with different um, um, uh, um, aligners and, 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 and software. Um, so the, the deep variant caller from, from, from BioPi of HiFi data is, is really, again, the, the gold, gold standard, um, um, better than the Illumina's um, old GATK and deep variant um, methods uh, or the ONT's um, PEPA um, software where it um, just uh, um, reduces errors and you're able to, to, to find the real variant so much better. And again, as we said, there's so much um, uh, work going on with genetic disease um, and the solve rates are going up and up. Um, I was actually uh, um, in a, a virtual talk um, the other day um, where they were talking about um, uh, Kids Mercy in Kansas City are doing a huge amount now in their brand new labs there, um, working out um, human um, um, genetic uh, disorders um, that were otherwise uncharacterizable and they're using Back by hi fi reads to, um, to, to, to find those, those variations in the genome that are causing these, uh, these genetic um, abnormalities and diseases. So, um, and, and the solve rates are, are going up um, using PAC bio, which is, is fantastic. Okay, and again, just more examples here of, um, uh, of, of why you need both the accuracy and the long reads to get into some of these um, uh, uh, problem areas. Again, you've got a 12 KB inversion. It's just impossible to get into with short reads. You just can't map accurately enough of, of, of where the problem is. Um, and again, um, you need that long read technology and, and, and the accuracy of sequencing in those areas. So um, there was a question in the, in the chat about the um, starting material. And uh, so this is quite timely. I'm glad I remembered that the question was there. It is uh, 15 micrograms from the standard uh, HiFi hi um, um, uh, procedure and checklist um, protocol that we showed at least um, up until now, things things are, are changing, as I said, um, and and we haven't got the latest release quite yet, but, um, but there are also low input methods so there's a procedure and checklist and, and kit for, for, for using um, whole genome sequencing with low input samples. So um, again, for, um, uh, for, for this, um, you're talking about, um, you know, 150 nanograms for, um, uh, for a, a SQL system, uh, and maybe 400 nanograms for a SQL 2 system. Um, and uh, then obviously you're able to multiplex this together and I'll give you an example of that on the, on the next slide of, of what you might want to do. So again, the protocol works you through the whole system of, 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 of DNA pooling um, it talks about the barcoded adapters that you can use to multiplex for the for the samples and, um, and the, the idea um, size of your libraries and and, uh, and such like. So let's flick on to an example of this. Okay, so here was a um, there were ten um, different um, 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 uh, moth species, I think that um, so they they collected individual moths and did a high molecular weight DNA extraction. 
um, this was using a quite a mega track kit um, and they made their so-called low input um, smart bell libraries um, with 400 nanograms of input um, per moth sample and, um, and then multiplex samples up on the um, on the SQL system and um, and they were able to get uh, fantastic assemblies from from all 10 moths um, down to their their species um, and or um, the common names given there as well um, so yeah amazing um, uh, assemblies from from uh, that work through with low low um, input a little bit more detail about exactly that. Um, so the different samples on your, on your left um, and their uh, uh, assembly sizes um, and the number of contigs and, um, uh, and the, the length of the contigs that were covering the, the so-called N50 um, scores that we've been through and, and the Busco um, assessment of completeness for, for, uh, for, for, them, for a moth for uh, arthropods. Um, and again, up in the 98, 99% range of um, completeness, um, which is fantastic um, for 10 board samples. Um, and there's also now um, even a, an ultra low DNA um, input method. Um, so um, again, only, only five nanograms of input genomic DNA um, in order to, um, to make your libraries. So um, uh, there is a, a protocol for that. So if, if, if collecting sample is uh, critical for you, not everybody works on, on, uh, on, on organisms where you can collect a lot. You may be dealing with human where you only have very small biopsy samples or, or whatever, or you may be working on organisms where you only get minute samples, which is the example I'll give here um, you know you may be working on museum type samples and, and and all you can have is a spider's leg or a you know a clip off a, a, off a fly's wing or something so you're going to obviously not be able to get 15 micrograms of, of DNA from you know from a, a tiny amount of tissue so um, here's an example five nanograms of, of DNA from a, a, a sand fly um, sequenced on a, on a single smart cell and the, the, the data yields and and um, and such like are given there, um, but high-fi uh, high-fi um, high read quality was fantastic, and um, again just showing you the, the read length of the libraries they chose, um, and the various assemblies and context scores again, and uh, even with this very very low, the the Busco score of completeness is still ninety seven percent, which is um, uh, fantastic, and they they had high-fi read coverage of about a hundredfold of this sample. So if you are struggling with the amount of, of input material you have, it's still doable. So just a, a summary now, I suppose, as we're getting um, um, towards time, um, just uh, some of the best practices um, here um, summarized for the whole genome sequencing itself, just for Genova assembly. So again, HiFi, absolutely the way to go. Um, uh, a very good balance between read length and accuracy, and, and that's the key to it all. Um, the, the, the read length allows you to get, get through these, these larger um, structural um, variants, which we'll talk a little bit more about at the end. And, uh, but the accuracy allows the assemblers to work really, really well and uh, give you very high um, contig, completeness and correctness. Um, so again, we went through this, um, but just as a summary, um, starting material, library size, um, size selection, um, generate your, your hi-fi reads, um, recommended coverage for uh, phased assemblies, um, and, uh, and then use um, the uh, SmartLink Genome Assembler um, uh, tools or, or community tools as you need to, um, to do your data. So variant detection, um, uh, yeah, slightly different, um, um, uh, but again, um, the recommendations are all there um, from, the, from the protocols. Still start with your DNA, uh, make your libraries rich for 15 to 20 KB inserts, um, uh, recommended two smart cells um, uh, for 15 fold coverage of human genome. And the rough price there, that's American dollars just for consumables only on there, but um, but again, we can help you with pricing in Australia and New Zealand. If you need it, come to Millennium Science and we'll, we'll be able to help you. Um, so this um, data allows you to detect all sorts of variant types, SNPs, indels, um, structural variants, copy number variants, and that sort of thing. And the, the um, um, uh, software is there for you to use um, uh, to do the um, variant analysis. And for structural variant analysis, again, similar. 
um, work through. Uh, perhaps your library size um, could be a little bit bigger for, for that because you want to get through large structural variants and, and, and get really good precision recall of everything. Um, but again, you're able to, um, with the coverage you need, you're able to pull samples together for this. So it reduces your per sample cost. Again, there's a US dollar um, consumables cost there um, as a guide. Um, but that allows you again with the software that that, that you have um, to to make those structural variant um, calls and um, and to visualise those. Um, and there is a, um, a a protocol, obviously, for um, for doing this for the structural variant detection itself. Again, that walks you through um, how to multiplex things together and um, sizes and, and things you'll need to go for. And uh, just an example from um, from two um, uh, libraries here from uh, human genome reference um, libraries. Um, it's the BC15 and 19. Um, they were both um, blue pippin size selected for their their size, uh, 36 kb, um, and just looking for the um, um, amounts of. of of structural variation you see the deletions or insertions looking at the precision and recall for each one as you can see um, they're very very high across both samples in fact the um, the second sample did, did slightly slightly better and that was tenfold um, unique coverage for each sample so again very very good performance um, from the data using those protocols and um, just a final example again here of, of looking for um, structural variants and how you might um, plot the data from the, uh, the software tools. So again, a um, uh, uh, human gene here, um, uh, a very, very highly rich, uh, GC rich region, very, very difficult to get a handle on, has multiple repetitive elements. So it's just about everything fighting against you. Um, um, and it's a 12 KB structural variant. Um, so um, the old Technology, short reader technologies, Sanger technology just couldn't couldn't cope with this. Um, but the packed by high fi reads were able to um, give you very high resolution and um, a map map this to find out what the um, structural variant uh, was. So that's just about the end. But um, what I want to um, to talk about now is is just um, uh, everything we've went through today. There there's change coming very 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 soon there's um, uh, new methods um, for, for for making these hi-fi libraries so what um, the latest kit version that's now about to be launched with its protocols and things the um, the sequel to binding kit so-called bit 2.2 it contains a new um, polymerase and uh, this polymerase is actually able to run a little bit faster than the existing polymerase that's in the older kit. So therefore you get longer sequencing, um, uh, which allows you to make your library slightly larger, which gives you advantages. Again, you get the same accuracy, the same amount of passes to get that really high Q score, um, but you can make the molecule longer because the polymerase is running faster. So um, this is really good news. Um, it, it allows for making maybe 25 to 30 KB um, library size rather than that 15 to 20 KB sort of size and, and, and get the same um, Q score, same quality values. And there's a new sequencing primer that's um, that's being bound to that that, that complex. So you anneal a different sequencing primer, so called V5 now, um, and then bind, bind to the new polymerase. Um, and all this combined allows you to um to, to do a so-called adaptive loading onto onto the sql2 so now when you're loading the, the smart cell um, rather than just giving it a, a set amount of time that was laid out in a protocol which was a little bit arbitrary and 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 was was found generally to be the best fit. It's now being monitored by the cameras. So it's actually seeing the molecules sit at the bottom of the wells and it knows how many of the of the 8 million uh, wells are actually filled. So it's, a, it's able to um, extend that time if, it, if it's still waiting for, for, for wells to load. Um, or, or if you um, load, um, it loads very quickly, it's able to cut the time down that you have to wait and actually get onto the sequencing so you get your data faster. So uh, it's a sort of win-win um, and and this so-called adaptive loading is going to be um, uh, very, very good. And it's been something that's um, been in sort of beta test for a while on the SQL 2. It's been one of those options, a little tick box for any of those of you that have played with a SQL machine that's been um, there, in, but but not activated. So, um, but it's now there and, um, and, and should be really, really good. It'll allow you to load probably at a higher molarity onto the onto the um, smart cell um, and, and it can stop the loading um, 
once it get, once it gets to that optimal level without overloading because um, you, you're not just setting it on time. So this is really really good, um, and the, and the, the the kit is is much the same structure as the as the older um, um, binding kit two and two point one. It's just it's got um, um, you know twenty four binding reactions and depending how many smart cells for each reaction you're running you can do up to 70 smart cell runs um, it's still not recommended if you're running very short so a sort of short amplicon library so less than 3kb um, is still recommended to run on the old system um, with the old primer and the old polymerase but um, as i say as things evolve and develop and more testing and things are done who knows it may all change over to the to the new um, the new polymerase but this is this is really good news for for gaining even better hi-fi data so that's really about it for today. Um, but um, um, thanks for attending, and uh, and thanks to those of you who maybe catch up with the video. Um, I can't see any more questions in the box, but um, I'll turn off my uh, screen share. Cool. Um, Hello. There was another question in the chat box. I believe it's a different box than the Q and A one. Um, it was from Paula. And they were wanting to know what were the compute resources used in the example for read correction and assembly table? Um, I have to say off the top of my head, I can't remember. I'd have to even look back through the slides to remember which one that is now. But um, look, leave it with me, Paula. Um, and um, I will either contact you to ask a little bit more about what you mean and which slide, um, because I guess you put the, the comment up and I was at a particular slide and didn't see it. Um, but I'll get back to you and, and find out. Um, but certainly I have some, some details of, of various compute resources used for, for various comparisons um, with, with other data sets. So I can certainly um, um, have a chat with you about that. Slide had the hours. Okay, I'll have a look through. I think I know the one you mean, but um, I'll, I'll talk to you, Paula, offline. How's that? Okay. Um, well, we're a little bit ahead of time, but it is lunch and learn. So I hope you managed to um, grab a sandwich and a, and a cuppa while you did this. I'm, I'm hanging for mine now. Um, so um, if there aren't any more questions, I guess we can stop the recording and, and, um, and I can wish you all a, 